Hello guys, today we will be covering one of the most important nodes in all of Substance Designer and that is Tile Sampler. And Tile Sampler is basically used for any shape based materials, anything that you want to do with shape you use Tile Samplers. And in almost every single material you will find Tile Samplers used in one way or another. So let's cover it quickly. So for example I created this, uh, this simple setup and let's cover all the parameters first. So instance parameters as usual X and Y amount you can increase both of them as you like. I, I will keep it 5 by 5 for presentation. Now patterns. Patterns are basically there are all the patterns that you can find on, in the shape node. Uh, basically all of them you can you can even uh, test every single one out. But uh, for this uh, this presentation we will use pattern input. And pattern input can be found on top of the tile sampler and can even be increased if you want more uh, more shapes or whatnot. But for now, we'll use one just for presentation purposes. Okay. After that, we have pattern input distribution, and we can use the distribution map. But that is um, that is not a really good idea because it's it basically distributes um, everywhere but where the white is as you can see we have the strongest white here if we increase the scale of this one we don't even see any any changes but basically uh, it kind of distributes it along the lines of uh, where the white is on this sh on this uh, mask you don't get uh, the shapes but anyways no almost never you will use this actually so after this we have rotation random and symmetry random we can see this uh, by using this kind of shape and symmetry random uh, is basically nothing special you never use these pretty much but um, let's get on because there's more important stuff to cover size so we have size x size y and you can even change the size uh, mode keep ratio absolute pixel and whatnot but usually just keep uh, the default settings of tile sampler you can get the size random of both y and x and you can get the normal scale one and you can even scale them randomly as you can see and another thing is scale map multiplier if we plug in a scale map which is going to be this paraboloid here uh, we are gonna get interesting results. As you can see, everything that was black on this one started growing smaller and smaller and everything that was white kept sim the similar size pretty much, as you can see. And uh, this can help us a lot with a lot of uh, interesting materials. Anyways. Uh, scale vector map vector map. We're not gonna cover this time and basically we never use it. So it, it is not relevant anyways Okay, after that we're gonna go into position. So we have position random which basically just positions our uh, Our stuff randomly and we can offset them a little bit differently and whatnot. It's it's a really really useful set of tools for creating some natural shapes and whatnot. Global offset is it is what it says it is, and uh, basically just offsets stuff a little bit. And now we have displacement map, and displacement map. If we put it in here and displace it, only the stuff that are within the circle, this this circle here, will get displaced. And we can turn the angle of displacement, as you can see. And vector map is something we're not going to cover. Uh, another thing, rotation. Uh, rotation is simple as just rotating, but you cannot see that on this one because it's a circle. So you can rotate, uh, you can uh, get the degrees you want and whatnot. You can say rotation random. And personally, the, the coolest thing is getting a rotation map input and just rotating the, the ones that you actually want to rotate based on this mask map here as you can see so everything will rotate but these in the middle will rotate corresponding to um, to the map and as you can see those that rotate the most are actually the one with whitest values uh, another thing we have to cover here is color 
and masking so we'll just use a simple mask here um, and for, we're gonna plug a mask map input and as you can see here let's just scroll down mask map threshold it's gonna mask out everything that is not on this circle as you can see and we can even say mask random that removes uh, that randomly re removes uh, everything from um, from our um, from our um, mask here. So we can even invert the mask if we like to, and we can get the sampling techniques. But this is nothing special to be honest. We can invert the mask as well if we want to, but yeah, that is basically it. But you can see the revert effect here best as you can see it it literally just reverts um, the mask and now the the good thing about this is uh, blending mode so we can have max and I will show you what both of them do so let's just go back to position and position them position them a little bit randomly so on max you can see these kind of collide with each other and don't really add up on each other and if we say add sub you can see a completely different effect forming now in most cases you're gonna be using max and not add sub but it's worth mentioning to that this blending mode actually exists now for the color you can see we can have color random and that basically just randomizes the color variation between um, between these uh, these shapes and we can do a color map input as you can see color parameter parametrization multiplier and this one uh, we actually want to go back and destroy this one so yeah we don't want color random as you can see it darkens everything that is sh it is black that is not on this circle and keeps white whatever it is based on uh, the white and black values and of course global opacity just for um, as you can see or the global opacity is pretty self-explanatory now we can even have the background color changed if we want to and um, basically that's it another thing to mention you can have a background image input which is well pretty self-explanatory uh, it just puts a background image behind uh, behind your uh, shapes and that is all so yeah, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one very soon. Bye. If you like this tutorial and would like to learn more about material creating and substance designer, consider checking out my Skillshare course down in the description. It is your go-to place to start learning more in depth about creating materials inside substance designer and is also amazing for beginners that want to hop right into material creation. Also, if you use my link in the description, you get to watch the entire course entirely for free.